What's up, everybody? It's Jeffrey Lyles welcoming you to another edition of Lyles Figure Files, doing something today that I hope to do a lot more of in the future. That's a figure of you, not just talking about figure news and stuff that's coming up, but actually unboxing and breaking down the Star Wars Black Series Star Killer figure. I've talked about it so much. You guys know I've been looking forward to this addition to the Black Series line for months, even years. Had him on, on some of my top five, top ten lists. He's finally in hand. I'm excited to finally review this guy, take him out of his packaging, and break him down. Now I just got to figure out where to put him on the shelf. Like I said, I haven't done a lot of figure reviews, so I'm still playing around with the camera zoom, the lighting, all that great stuff. Hopefully I'll get that figured out soon enough because I enjoy doing these. I hope you, you guys will enjoy this one too. So without further ado, let's break it down. Let's get this bad boy unboxed. Enjoy. Here he is, all of his Black Series glory. Let's take a look at the packaging first and foremost. It's a normal deal. Thankfully, we've got the window back, which is awesome and great. The full things so you can see it. Big foil embossed there for gaming greats. I like that. It's a nice little touch. Makes the gaming greats stand out a little bit more. You see him and all of his glory. Not a ton of accessories. Definitely different from the comic-con or post exclusive version i'm trying to remember which one it was star killer like the game and grace had this aqua blue turquoise color i like it then on the side my favorite favorite part of this series is the mural and you can see to the left side here got that general grievous arm so he's the last one that we got of course and then this is such a cool look because this is sam whitworth as star killer got the lightning bolts all set the force lightning about to erupt you see everything he looks like a great likeness of him and since he's based on an actor it's a little bit easier than some of the other figures based off of video game and comic books you can see up top here i think you can see it is this darth vader silhouette which is so cool and the clones of star killer in the back no spoilers for anyone who hadn't played this game yet then on the back We've got the typical excellent bio from the Star Wars team. Definitely one of their highlights. Starkiller, Garam Galen Merrick, codenamed Starkiller, was a Force-sensitive human who became Darth Vader's apprentice during the Galactic Empire's reign. There you can see it fully in all of its glory there. And a better shot of him. And just to make sure you know where you can play this game, helpfully thrown right here, Star Wars Force Unleashed. I really like that, so... I think more companies or more brands from Hasbro should do this. You know, it's just something really small. It's something they could add on to any Marvel legend. See this character in Amazing Spider-Man, Uncanny X-Men, X-Force, Fantastic Four, etc. Really clean, really obvious. He's number 26 in the Gaming Greats line. And then just the basic side. Just Gaming Greats here again. And your usual window packaging. Now let's open them up and see what's really going on inside. And Star Wars are set up really interesting because it's just the plastic on the outside is part of this. So same gaming gray sticker here. Use that tray. Then, as always, very carefully remove that lightsaber. Quick pull. And then push the figure out as always. Okay, so here you go. You can see this head sculpt of Star Killer. And you can really make out that this is Sam Whitworth. Maybe the paint is a little bit soft. I feel like when some customizers really get a hold of this, they're going to go nuts painting this figure up and really bringing that likeness out. Now, one thing that's very obvious to me right away is the lack of that widow's peak. You can see that really well here with this. He's missing that. And I think that's losing a little bit something there. I think his nose, just the way the sculpt is done up, makes that look not as distinct. Cheekbones seem to be intact, which really indicates to me we're going to see how great that head sculpt is once somebody paints it up properly. And I don't think the paint is bad. I just think it kind of loses some of the detail. And as usual for all Sith users, they got those red in the eyes. You can see the red bags. He's got that Anakin look like, oh man, I'm corrupted and possessed by the dark side. It's infected me. And you know, I just think there's something here with the plastic. Maybe it's a little bit too soft, a little too shiny, something. It's holding back the likeness a little bit, but it is there. 
And I think they did a really good job capturing all the details of the outfit when, you know, it's taken in a figure form. It's kind of like, boy, this is a wild outfit. It's got a lot of stuff going on with it. So you can see it's got like these collar pads here, the details, including this sculpted knob. It's not sculpted. I mean, it's not just painted on. This actually rides up. So it's a fully separate piece, which is really cool. There's some damage on it. Some little scrapes you can see on there. And I like that. It really shows that this is indeed armor. So there's a little clasp here as well that you can see. Nice accents, nice silver on there. And it goes around. Like I said, you can see how it rides up and comes up. So there's no issue with articulation. You can see more of the scratches and battle damage on it on this side. And with the hair, I kind of wish there were a little bit more details. Like it was a separate sculpt that was raised oh so slightly. This one is just kind of sculpted into the head. I think you can see like the little details where it's actually done. They took the effort to sculpt some elements onto this bald head in essence to give you that look of, hey, he's got some actual hair sculpted. But I think if they had just raised it up a little bit more, giving it a little, just a fraction more maybe, we could see that better and the details would shine a lot more. It's okay to just wish that it had a little bit more depth to it. Now let's take a look at the full outfit and you can see it's got some really complicated, intricate design work here. Star Killer's outfit's a mask of straps and all these wraps around his body. He's very slender, as you can tell. So he's not as prominent wide as some other characters. Kind of like a Luke Skywalker in that sense. You can see they just kind of trail and wrap around on all these areas. You can see it as well on the boots, which really look nice. Good amount of detail on them. And this skirt piece has some damage as well. So it's got some rips, got some holes in there too. Vader does not care about how pristine his lackeys look. So it's got some holes. And I think you can plug, you should be able to plug that lightsaber. Of course, not lit right into these holes. Yeah, so you can do that with no problem. It's good to know for later. There are a lot more of these on the back end. So you could use any one of them, I'm assuming now, as your holder for the unlit lightsaber. So that works out pretty nice. Do this wherever you want. I like that. You can kind of function and put him wherever you like your lightsaber. So that's cool. You can see the different elements. We've got a little hook here, a little latch. Another one on this side and more silver elements. Those little pristine details, they really did a nice job with. You can see here, he's got a little gauge monitor here on his arm that's fully wrapped up. And it's got some scrapes and scars and cracks on it. So this is not a pristine full sleeve. It's got some rips. And you can see here, it's got a little paint damage. Paint damage. It's some blood. And I think they did a really nice job making it look like a scar. It doesn't look like they just smeared some red paint on it. It looks like some actual bloody damage to them. And that is also repeated on this forearm. It looks like it is just bleeding coming down his arm. And I think they did a really great job with that. You can see here more wraps. And you see how the fingerless glove setup is here. Also like how that turned out. So he really looks cool. And just to show you again, this is how that outfit should look. Uh, on that end, the figure really matches up well. See all the straps and details, the bolts, and all of the little buckles, all that elements, they're intact with this figure. So nice job from the sculpting team on that end. Now let's see how he scales with some other figures. Black Series 9. Start off with his master, Darth Vader. And as you would want, now this, this is the Empire Strikes Back version of Vader, so... Not quite the same as the New Hope, Rogue One, all these different incarnations of Vader we got now in figure form. Not even the Kenobi one. Mine likes to do a little split of the legs, but you can get a pretty good sense. He is taller, which is great. That's exactly what you want. That nice discrepancy between Vader and his apprentice. So he's got a nice distinction between him. Starkiller also comes up about the same height as a Stormtrooper given the fact that a head should be in this helmet as well, which is always cool. I think they've done a nice job incorporating that element into these figures. This is an older Black Series Stormtrooper, not the 
nice modernized version we've seen with the 40th anniversary return of the jedi version but you can get a sense here how he scales pretty nice so you can imagine he's taller but he doesn't have that helmet boosting up his height some like i mentioned earlier he is very slender compared to vader and a stormtrooper but the stormtrooper actually looks like he's wearing armor compared to star killer so that's another nice twist now, the Pulse exclusive San Diego Comic Con version, he had a ton of accessories. This time, we're not getting much of anything. We get his lightsaber, and that is it. As usual, they do really nice work here with the sculpting. Let's see. Hopefully, let's pull it up here. Get that detail popping out. There you go. So you can see nice, intricate, unique hilt for him. Really well done. Nice deep red blade. That's nice. The one problem that I have with the figure, or one of the problems I have, is, and it's not a lot. I said that as if there were 30 things wrong with him. His grip is a little bit weak, so he can hold the lightsaber just fine like that. But when you start moving it further on to him, you see this little quick slide down the arm or hand it just it doesn't like to stay locked in place that's okay but it's still a little floppier than i want my jedi or sith users to hold their saber now if you go more from a game accurate kind of pose with the lightsaber with him is that same style that our girl ahsoka rocks with her lightsabers it will fit a little bit better but again this this grip point is weak and I wish I could just tighten it up a little bit more. I hate having to fight it all the time just to stay locked in place. You can see now it's a little bit better, but it's still a frustrating kind of endeavor. So you can rock that behind the back saber strike pose that he's frequently used in the game. Now let's break down all of his articulation. I forgot to mention kind of like the force hand. This is nice because you can do that whole force choke deal he's got that in place i wish he came with some of the extra hands that the other figure did i understand they needed to make that the exclusive make it worth your while to go and get that it's still available on pulse if you want to spend 110 and get him two extra stormtroopers but i gotta feel like i have that now without it so there you go cheaper than 110 dollars but i wish there were some more accessories I mean, there's some hands i really wish he had one of which is the Force Lightning one, because that would be a great accessory for him to include. He had two in that exclusive set. I wish they just thrown in one, but there is a little bit of a cheat you can get away with. Here is the Lightning Hand, left hand of the Emperor. You could do this with the other one too, but these come off still. No problem there. They easily, as I struggle to get it off, come off. And you're not going to get it a perfectly snug fit it just won't work but with a little bit of patience you can plug it in pretty good pretty well to the point where it'll slide in there of course you're going to lose some of the you know exact likeness because it's not the same but you can plug this in and kind of hide the fact that the peg isn't exactly sticking in so you can do Kind of like a long distance shot, like so. I'm like, hey, I can't even see that it's not really attached. And then you can plug it in. So you kind of get that sense of, hey, I can get away with this. You make it work, sort of. You get the full force unleash look for him. Lightning. Pull off my saber strike pose here, if it'll cooperate. There we go. Flip you around. That's how you should look. Get yeah, I really need to figure out a way to tighten this up because it is a pain to fight the hilt all the time. Really wish they had done that better. That's my biggest gripe with this figure. But you can do that eventually. Kind of keep that in. And you can see you can kind of tease out. And you can see, hey, maybe he doesn't need it. But of course, you'd like them to have included that. I for sure wish they had thrown that in. Unfortunately, no. Now let's take a look at his actual articulation. 
pretty decent. You can get a nice wide split. This skirt piece here will stop a little bit of his movement, but not too bad. So you can still do most of the things you'd want to do with them. It does not get in the way of any leg movement, though. He can do a pretty nice high kick. No issues. Side kicks also available. And then no double jointed knee. But the way this sculpt is done, you can hide it better than I think some of the Star Wars Black Series figures. So this is the cut underneath this. So they hit it a lot better, I think. So they don't have that huge gap that we've seen like with some of the clone troopers. It actually folds in pretty well. It makes for a nice ball joint. And get in pretty deep enough. And then, of course, the feet. Ankle moves around too, which is nice for helping him hit some of those poses of Star Killer. And here's one that I was very happy to be able to pull off. You have to move this skirt piece though, but you can almost hit the full subservient kneeling to Vader pose, which I definitely wanted to do and try out. Now, I wish this torso could sink in just a little bit better because it's so close that it's almost there. Here's Vader. There's his apprentice. So there you go. I mean, he can do that pretty well. Not as great as I'd like, but pretty solid. And that kind of brings up the other articulation piece. And I just wish we're a little bit better, a little bit more movement, a little bit more range. It's pretty good, but I wish it could be a little better, is this torso. Now, he doesn't have the mid-torso joint. That, I think, would be really helpful for him. He's got a little bit of a floating deal, but it also has some of this action figure piece where you try to swing it, and it pops back. Sith Apprentice with swinging torso. So I wish that were a little bit better and not so much of a spring back feature to it that I didn't ask for. He can go back okay. Can't go down as much as I like. So I wish this joint here had just a bit more range and its torso had a little bit more side to side. He is really close to hitting everything I would want, but just a little bit of restrictions there on that joint piece. The elbows, single jointed as usual for Black Series figures. You know the drill. I still think even without it, they work pretty well. So there's like your typical single joint elbow because they have this little extra cut in here. You can get it about as high as you would really conceivably need for it. Now it can't go in for a little bit closer on that shot, but it's pretty good. Um, in terms of butterfly shoulders, we do have it. It's a little bit restricted, so you don't get a ton of range in movement. But it is there. No bicep articulation, which would be helpful as always for lightsaber duelers. Can hit the overhead lightsaber strike. So there you go. Overhead lightsaber strike, basically. Again, the lightsaber grips are just the one thing that's holding my man Star Killer back. But he can hit that. And he can get really deep with that pose. He's pretty good about his base. So once you get him into it, he's solid. He's not going to start tipping over, which is not the case with some of these Black Series figures. So he can hit those really nicely. And then he can hit his aggressive lightsaber stance pretty well. I need to figure out some tips. If you guys have any good ones for me to... Get this lightsaber in place better. Let me know. I'll happily incorporate it. So there you go. I mean, he can really, he's very poseable. There are just a few limitations based on that torso joint that I think really holds him back. But otherwise, he's really good in terms of doing all the things that a lightsaber user should do. This hand is not as helpful for the lightsaber grips as the other one because same issue. It just slides on now. Just slide away. So that's a real problem. But I know there's a way. Maybe I just need to heat up the hands a little bit more. But that is the issue with my man Starkiller. His lightsaber grip 
It's not the best. You can hit it and can do this. Rock his forced gesture pose. So, hey, I'm going to choke you out. Nice and simple while I'm doing some other damage. So, a nice aggressive pose for him. The head range, the neck joint range is pretty good. Let's pull out an unsuspecting stormtrooper. So, there you go. And then if you want, throw him off screen. But there you go. He's, like I said, he's really good in terms of those generic basic storm slashing stormtrooper dueling poses that you'd like to do once you get him locked in place with that lightsaber. I said before, he's got a great center of balance. He's great about holding poses. I said that. Let's see if he can just swing this for me real fast. And no problem. He's really fun in terms of that. Hey, I can do this too. And thanks to those ankle tilts, no problem in terms of making them look nice and dramatic for whatever you want him to do. It's always helpful, especially with a lightsaber user. <laughs> Man, that 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 grip is the worst. It's really just holding him back a little bit. So really deep stance. Pull back your lightsaber a bit more. And there you go. So he can hit stuff, and it's great. So really had a lot of fun with him. If there were some tweaks that I could make and suggest, you know, my number one, fixing that lightsaber grip, just because it's really weak. And you can't have a Jedi or Sith holding his lightsaber like that. That's just not great. It's not ideal and not the way you'd want it. And the other thing, there you go. It just flies out for me nice and helpfully. I'll plug this into the side. There we go. It's just this torso articulation. It's good. Cindy Lauper would say it's good enough, but it's just not as great as it could be. And I don't know if that's because it's all of these, this waist piece is keeping it locked in place. But with just a better range here, a little bit more to the sides, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the back and the front. It's the only thing holding him back. But he's a really good figure in terms of his articulation and movement. I think the paint job's pretty solid. You can see this green element here on the front of the skirt piece, long here on the arm sleeves. And then there's a little trace of it on the boots as well. I think they turned out really nice on all those elements with them. Nice looking figure. Just a little paint job with a sculpted hair element to it. Just a full hair sculpt, not just a kind of faded deal that they've got on this figure. Would have really done a lot with them. He's good, and I'm really happy to have him in the collection. And as soon as I can figure out the grip, he's going to be really good. And I had a lot of fun with him, having him pose with Darth Vader, getting that full, this is my apprentice, your highness the emperor and just being able to rock that it's really cool i think he's a fun figure really glad to have him but just a few tweaks would have made him maybe one of my star wars figures of the year he's really good outside of that so thank you for tuning in and watching hope you enjoy and if you picked up star killer black series let me know what you think for now this episode of Lyle's figure files has been filed